So the, the theme of this, uh, oh, excuse me if I'm looking, I have to remember, but uh, it's about international expansion for small and young publishers, which doesn't mean that all the other publishers are old and big or ugly. Not. Um, so I'm not here to talk too much because they are there for that. I'm supposed to moderate, so I'm trying to moderate myself first. Uh, but the first thing to, to do for a small and young publisher is probably to, to be here and uh, to, to try to, to make contact with fellow publishers from around the world. Uh, now, I would like to ask questions. I don't know who's going to answer it, but when you start your business, you have a local catalog. You, want, you think that it's good for, for international exploitation. You don't know exactly how it works. Where do you start, well, Phil? You could, Annette? You could start with your local music, um, music publishing association if, um, and also um, your competitors as well. It's about actually building relationships and talking to people and finding out where your catalogue or, or your publishing company will sit. And it's very important to get like-minded people, I think, on, uh, on board. Um, so, obviously, Medem um, is a very good place to start internationally. Um, there's, there's always, it's the best place, really, to see your sub-publishers. ADE is another good conference to go to where many sub-publishers go to. Um, I mean, there's many conferences... IMS, which is also a good conference in Ibiza. Um, there's, the, there's many conferences going on around the world, but obviously that's a great, sometimes a great expense for young publishers and, and sort of young companies. But um, I, it's really is, Medem is really is a good starting place. If I may just jump in, I think when you started off by saying that um, one good way is to connect to, to the local publishing association, that only works, of course, in a territory where you have uh, a, a dynamic and proactive local uh, independent or local publishing association. So, yeah, sure. It's not always the case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. In smaller yeah. territories, you're absolutely right. But, um, you know, obviously, I'm. Talking so, from, 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 from your comment, Nuno, I understand yeah. that you're not coming from a country like that. So what did you do? Well, um, you know, we have an association, but, but it's, it's not... Um, I, I wish sometimes that it would be more dynamic and do more things, uh, which is the case with our independent trade association on the, on the master side. Um, so um, I, I think definitely I'm a bit of a conference junkie, so I, I agree with going to the conferences that are relevant, uh, not just for publishing administration, but especially for sync and for the, for the creative side, so yeah. Phil, is it easier when you're coming from a big country with a music uh, that everybody knows, a uh, big industry from the state, like the States? It's definitely easier when you're representing well-known songs. Uh, I've been fortunate to, I've experienced three scenarios where I've had to build or help enhance our international representation. So I'm currently with Atlas. Atlas is about six and a half years old, fairly young company. I've only been with Atlas for three and a half years. So when I came on board, we, we had a, a, an international network of self-publishers in place. And, uh, you know, I was basically um, given the responsibility to enhance those relationships, but we also made some changes. So, so last year at Medem, we entered into uh, a number of new self-publishing deals and that was a combination of existing relationships that I've had for a long time but also uh, the same process for even someone like myself who's been in the biz for 20 years research and, and networking and things change over time so that's involving you know the indie publishing community is a really special one in terms of we're all publishers we, we sort of compete against each other as like any other business but we also help each other in, in terms of, you know, we share the same philosophy and approach to the biz. So seeing who's being represented by who, analyzing the type of catalogs that maybe certain publishers are better suited for, knowing what your, your own value proposition is, it 
sounds kind of jargony, but you know, what is unique and special about your catalog that is of value to the folks in other territories? And uh, you know, being clear about that and communicating that to those publishers is really important because it's not a universal fit. You may have uh, great standards that have universal appeal. That certainly is easier to uh, to find uh, you know interested suitors. But maybe you're a young catalog and you have really syncable material and you control publishing and master rights. That's also of great appeal to publishers who might be really active in promoting for sync. Um, you may have genre specification that some publishers would really, would really love to have more of in their catalog. So knowing your own value and researching the options out there to find the right fit, if you can do that before you come to meet them, and we're talking, you know, preparing not weeks but months ahead of me dem because when you're here, you want to be spending time with those folks, not trying to find them. And uh, you know, if you can put the work in and the research and the networking, you can really accomplish a lot here at me dem. And that's how it's been for me for close to 15 years. So. Good. Yeah, yeah uh, I I agree. I re I agree with you that experiences. I experienced the, this part of uh, the publishing, uh, the indie world is different. I've been for a long time in a multinational, and when I came to uh, an independent company, which is a big one, but it's uh, independent, I really had the chance to understand that this world is very interesting, so I push I push everybody to uh, to start his own publishing company because it's a, a challenge, but it's uh, very um, rewarding. I mean, because uh, if you invest and you find the right talent, you can build catalogs, and then this is your life. And of course, it's a matter of songs and writers, but it's also a matter of publishing. So uh, really, I'm, I'm very happy that I had the chance to see this part of the business. And. Um well, you know, publishers, independent publishers, they represent each other in, in different territories. It's still like that today. Um, but you, you cannot publish in your own country every publisher from of the course. world. And, but even w outside of the network of your partners, do you, do you, do you have the feeling that uh, the, publish, the independent publishers around the world are some kind of network that can uh, cooperate even if they don't represent each other? I definitely agree with that. I mean, again, we compete, but as indies, we have shared interests in, in helping each other. And generally, sub-publishing deals tend to be exclusive, uh, exclusive relationships, which often makes you have to choose a particular partner in a territory. But sometimes we wish, you know, we could work with several different parties and we've nurtured relationships with, you know, several companies in most territories. And you know we're still seeing each other at Medem. We're still making referrals. We're still trying to help each other. And I think it's because the stronger the indie community is, the stronger we all are. And it really, that sense of community really is strong here, which is why I really love coming to Medem because it's a sort of a reunion. You know, in one town, everyone from around the world. And you have to take advantage of that time because you never know that that one random introduction that just happens at you know maybe the bar or the hotel could be the start of a brand new relationship that can really do a lot for your, your company. Yeah. And, um, you know, as, as independent publishers, we have two, two basic uh, uh, jobs to do. One is admin, the other one is creative and exploitation. Uh, do, do you make a difference for your expansion, international expansion, choice of partners between admin and creative? What do you really expect from a partner outside? Uh, your your uh, home territory. Uh. Yeah, I mean, definitely. And just following up on, on what you said, I, uh, for example, on the creative side, if um, if we have a client in Portugal that's looking for something that we don't have in our in our catalog uh, or in in our several sub published catalogs, but we know that one of the other independent publishers have it, we, we will definitely outreach um, and and we're we're very proactive that way on on the sync side. So, what was the question? Well, the, the, the questions was, there is an admin side and there's the exploitation, the creative side. Can you combine both with every sub-publisher you can meet or what, what do you expect from a sub-publisher? Uh, well, I think it also depends on the territory because every territory has its own nuances of how it works, how, you know, you can get cuts or maybe it's a co-writing situation. Um, it, everyone is different and individual and unique in its own way. So it's about understanding those territories as well. And I think 
by obviously building those relationships and building your network and medium as you say is the perfect place for that um, you, you find out what works for you and that's the most important thing so you know sometimes it might be a little bit of trial and error but you really do have to do your homework and research and talk and find out and find your tribe <laughs> if you like I like to think that we, we, we have high expectations of all of our international partners. So we want great collection, great administration, and we also want creative collaboration and involvement. But I also tell my team that the onus is really on us to drive that. So we have some great partners who do that without you know, us having to proactively ask them to do it. But I really feel like the responsibility of a publisher who is represented in other territories, we need to be making that process happen, happen. And that's communicating with them, providing them with details about the activity of our catalog, opening the door for collaboration. Because you know, the reality is it's like any other business. You, know, you can be quiet and hope for the best, or you can be proactive and make things happen. If you choose the right partner and you have the right relationship, you can really get some, you know, some great things to happen. But I take the responsibility on our shoulders to help our partners in the other territories. We view them as an extension of our company. So while self-publishing is a term, I, I like to think of it as a verb rather than a noun because really our self-publishers are music publishers just like us, except mm -hmm. they know their market, they know their territory, and we want to tap into their expertise so that we, we all benefit from that. Yeah. yeah, and communication is the key, absolutely. And you really do need to work at it. It's not going to happen otherwise. You're absolutely right. Especially for a catalog like, like ours, we have uh, an Italian language, which is not easy at all, of course. And for you, That's it's beautiful. easier probably because I <laughs> but, uh, English, of course, it's uh, the, the worldwide language. So in Italian, uh, sometimes it's difficult. But nowadays, with the networking and the, all the digital possibilities that we have, uh, it's much more, it, it, it's easier to have writers co-write and publishers cooperate and have a song which is published by three different publishers in three different countries. So yeah. this is very, it's an opportunity that came in the last uh, decades, not before. So uh, really it's something that we have to uh, exploit and, and improve. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have a few... A few... A few, a few yeah. <laughs> yeah, a few, few, few copyrights together, yeah, for example. True. Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yes. And um, so... Um, how, how, no, no, how do you introduce you? I, I tell you because, you know, she mentioned Italian music, your Portuguese music. Yes. This is n not what the people, well, don't take it personally, but that's not especially what the people expect usually, as, especially when it's coming to pop music or that yes. kind of things. How do you introduce yourself? What, what yeah, it, Portugal's an interesting market that way because Portugal has, has always been very Western facing. You know, we've got our backs t towards Spain. By the way, it's a terrible mistake to try and do Portugal via Spain because yeah. it, it's, um, and I know historically that's been often the case because there weren't many publishers to, to choose from in Portugal. But, um, but it's really a, an English uh, dominant culture. Like it, we, it, it's, it's not a very Latin culture at all. So it's really, really different in terms of, of the sync market, the film, um, every, everything is, is Western facing. And, uh, you know, Portugal was always allied with the UK fighting the Spaniards anyway. And so, so, um, so, so it's, it's kind of, um, again, I digress. What was the question, Pierre? Uh, I, I think you should have more fish. <laughs> No. The question was, well, okay, uh, Claudia said Italy. It was, ah, could, yes. have, could be difficult. And yeah. I was telling basically, so Portugal must be even so more have, difficult. You know, we have, um, we have a lot of very culturally relevant writers and composers that are using particular instruments from, from Portugal. One that I can tell you about is Ugaju, who played at Eurosonic in January, and he's, he's, he's using the viola campanisa. Now, this is a very specific ancient medieval instrument from the Alentejo, and he's doing this in a new rock and roll way, and that, obviously that couldn't come from anywhere else. But it's not a language-based... I mean, it's instrumental, first of all, so, so there, there's not even any... Uh, well, sometimes he has Portuguese poets that, that collaborate with him, and they, they recite poetry over the viola campanisa, which is quite interesting. But it, um, other than that, we have 
uh, also bands that sing in English, you know, so, so it's, um, it's, it's a mix. Okay, good. Well, ba back to, to the creative... Well, can, could we have... Uh, back to the creative side uh, of collaborations. Uh, well, I mean, the creative um, world of your artists are based in your home country, ba but what, what can you do with your sub-publisher? How can your sub-publisher help? Again, depending on the territories, but what, what could a sub-publisher do for you? Well, a sub-publisher can try to put together his writers, his connections with ours. And this is very, very important and very attractive to our writers. So when, when we sign new writers and we tell them, if you sign to us, remember that we can offer you this kind of possibilities. You can be able to write with this, that, and that, hopefully, of course, <laughs> because there are no guarantees. But this really is something that uh, it's uh, appealing totally appealing to them. So uh, um, I think that when this then happens, really, it's, uh, it's a goal for all of us, of course, because it's a mixture of all the, all the two cultures and two different yeah. kind of music. So the song can be different, like, uh, for example, if it has been written by the same people in the same country, probably it's, the result is another one, so it can be also very interesting and, dif and different. And um, I, I think this uh, is something that really uh, push writers to, uh, to stay with us and have possibilities. There are camps around the world, and so we send them uh, wherever we can and put writers together, so this is what we... But I think in today's market, anything can come from anywhere. Yeah. So that's, right. that, that's key to remember. And, you know, everybody wants to, to you know, you, they want to work, they're interested. It's, it's uh, anything's possible. And there we're talking about the career of your writers. So yeah. where, where the, the difference is big with the, the performers and with the labels then, no? Because uh, do you especially need, well, if you, if you have, uh, if if you're trying to, to release a master abroad, it's better if you're successful in your home country before, often, especially in small countries, no? But on the on publishing side, is it different? I mean, something that's pretty basic for us and that can go so far is if we have, a, even if it's an emerging songwriter artist who's playing shows locally in the, in the major cities, we love it that our self-publishers will welcome into their office and like basically it's an extension of our company. So if they're playing locally, either they're being welcomed into the office or our representatives are going out to their shows, maybe bringing mu music supervisors to the shows. It's like that, that's the real value of us having people on the ground is because only they can do that. We can't do that from the US. We need folks who have those relationships and can do those things locally and, and impart that local advantage, if you will. So that's really a big thing for us, is just making our songwriters and artists feel like, you know, even though Atlas is a U.S. company, we're really an international company, thanks to our, our partners. Okay, and, and you know, uh, we've, we've been talking about the, the home country versus other countries. But now we're in a world where frontiers are a little bit less important than in the past. So it's true, again, I'm going to make the difference between admin and, and creative slash exploitation. But, but um, uh, on the admin side, you still have uh, a, a CMO, a collective management organization in every country, minimum one. And all your, your titles must be properly registered with that society. But uh, when you come to, to online exploitation, centralization, that kind of things, does it change something in, in your relation with your sub-publisher? Uh, I mean, the frontiers are a bit different. I know that, you know, you have different hubs in Latin America, you have back office, you have SASM and iServices, uh, you have a big pan uh, Asian uh, licensing tool from uh, AMRA. Uh, how do you see that, Annette? Yeah, you know? it's, it, it's definitely a never-changing landscape. And, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, with the digital um, online stuff now, there are. There's, there, there, um, it's often getting taken away from the sub-publishers, which is it does happen, but it's really important to have somebody on the ground in the territory as well because you, you just need to understand the different culture and just how it works and how things do. But, yeah, that, there is definitely that, that movement to take away 
Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, we're keeping an eye on Intel yeah. and, and seeing what how Intel can can develop, um, especially given the, the the slight nuance of of BM countries and, and that. But um, but in in I hope it's implemented in a way that won't affect the sub publishing arrangements that we have because uh, it, it's important to sort of uh, have your cake and eat it too. Yeah. And on, on the, the expertise of every every company in yes. their own territory is so so important because the laws are different, and so you really need the help of, of people that really know how to administer a catalog, because uh, it's not only about creativity, of course, but it's about well administrating your catalog and your uh, partner's catalog. Otherwise, you you will never <coughs> sign new ones if your uh, the, the 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 opinion that they have around the world is not good about your administration. So this is very very important. And collecting your money, of yeah. course. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We've we've had some situations where we, we've um, started sub publishing some catalogs in Portugal, and um, our our rep at the society SBA. Um, I'm not going to name names, but but he was very happy that we started representing one particularly large catalog because the previous um, administrator was not using CWR or, you know, it was very old school. So they were very happy at that and, and that's incredibly important, I think, in, you know, 2019, is it? That to, to be yeah. using uh, all the tools that you have available to you at the present day. So on, on, on the... Does that work? Yeah. On the admin side, you think that there are limits to, to uh, direct memberships that a lot of publishers are using today? You, you came back from a worldwide admin deal with a big company, back to several sub-publishing agreements? Correct. Yeah. When I, when I came on board at Atlas, we had one, one company representing us for all of Europe. And uh, you know, prior to Atlas, I had my own small, small publishing company for five years, and prior to that, I was with a great in, independent publishing company, Cherry Lane. And under both of those tenures, you know, we really valued our relationships with our sub-publishers. Now, the industry is changing, and you can't ignore it. There is consolidation and licensing, there's streamlining, there's technology and collection. We can't turn our eyes away from it, but we always make our decisions uh, in a way to incorporate our, our overseas partners into the new, the new uh, worldview, if you will. So we don't want to, you know, if there's an opportunity to collect our money quicker and better, we're going to maybe look at that. But also, how do we involve our foreign partners so they still feel like they are our partners and not just they get what's left? Yeah, and I, I would add that uh, for that kind of deals, you know, it's always good when somebody from a company is going to the show of any artist that can perform, you know, because artists are touring very early, even before they have a, a record deal. And uh, if they play in a small venue in Paris, Brussels, Lisbon, wherever, it's always good to, to have somebody visiting and tell, hey, I'm working with, with, with your publisher. It makes the difference. I agree with, oh, with all of you. I yeah. think. Uh, and um, still about... Uh, Expansion, international promotion, and, and less frontiers than in the past. You're using a lot of uh, the social network like a tool. We were talking about one of your bands yesterday based in London, and uh, that I see all the time on the social networks. So, are you using that a lot? And it does give it result to, to you also, not in, in only in your territory? Is, it, is that a a tool to consider very seriously. Absolutely, I think it's fundamental, uh, mainly for the young generations, which are really on that. <laughs> so they really uh, discover what happens through the socials. So uh, sometimes, and sometimes, often, it's more important than having a big press uh, uh, announcement because they discover everything from there. So yes, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I think you have to cover all bases these days. It's, yeah. it's, there's a lot to cover, and, and that's why you need, uh, you know, all of those ingredients. I think. And well, it's it's not uh, typical to to the international exploitation, but uh, I mean, do you have the feeling that these last years, because it was more difficult for the record labels to sell records because the streaming was not properly organized yet, etc. The publisher has uh, more, uh, more importance and more legitimacy than in the past and is more essential in, in the upflow development uh, of, of young artists even before they're signed to a record label. I yeah. know that the answer I is yes, that, but maybe can you have a word sure. about that? 
the, the, the roles have definitely, there's a blurring of the lines now between what publishers do and what they used to do and what, what record labels do. So we view ourselves as in, integral in the process, especially with uh, emerging songwriters who may be artists themselves. You know, we're not relying on a label to do the work, the, the hard work of getting that, that songwriter noticed. So in many ways, publishers are acting, you know, sort of as a label in terms of promoting, getting the word out. Social media obviously is a huge tool, as long as you don't fall into the trap of thinking just because you're maybe blowing up on social media that that is a worldwide sort of uh, exploitation. It's not. You still need to get the markets act act actively acting on it. But th the social media tool helps us communicate to our partners in a way that was never possible before. Yeah, and, and also gives more visibility to the writers uh, and make people understand that songs are written by writers and not, not just sung by artists. If they are singer-songwriter, of course, yes. But in, the, in this way, uh, people discover that there are writers, publishers, other professional type of, uh, of works, not, not only the record company. And this is uh, something that helps uh, the awareness of our job. And I, I think as well, uh, you know, publishers act, especially in the development of, uh, of new, of new uh, writers, artists, as management almost sometimes before, yeah. and you help them get management. Yeah, so, right. I mean, all of, you know, it's, uh, it all starts with a song. So you can actually, you know, you can touch on all of, all of the music business through the publishing. It's, it's a very creative <laughs> service at the end of the day, and, and, and it has to be, you know. But technology become, became important. So, I mean, we, we're talking now about a combination of two worlds. I mean, the good old work of the publisher, very close, very human, very creative. And, uh, and, but, uh, but technology is super important for administration these days. Absolutely. So you need both. Yeah, yeah you, you need to cover all bases. I think that's, that's, that is the, one of the keys. Okay, we have 44, 43, 42, 41 <laughs> seconds left. Do you want some? Do you want to add something before we finish, Nuno? Yes, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Music Moves Europe and Creative Europe because they, they've recently started talking about co-creation, and uh, I think that that leads to the songwriting camps. And also, um, there is a Music Moves Europe project called Europe in Sync. Um, sorry, Philip, uh, for 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 the European. Um, publishing community, I think that's very relevant. So check out europeinsync.eu. Okay. Good, thank you. Claudia? Thank you. No, I, I just wanted to highlight again the importance of IMPF and, and uh, yeah. the staying together. Yeah, a word about IMPF, time is up, it's written, it's okay. flashing, time is up. Good. Um, Sorry. Yeah, then just IMPF and the Music International <laughs> Forum is a worldwide association of uh, independent music publishers. So I invite you to, to check the, the website. It's impforum.org. You you'll have all the information. And I think it's, you know, publish, independent publishers are a network. And uh, we have to join forces because uh, there are issues all over the world about our basic rights. And uh, we have to, to, to be cautious about that. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Thank you Philip. Thank you. Annette, Claudia, no, no, thank you.